the nephron. I love nephrons. No, really, I do. I'm going to tell you a little something, something about the nephron. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. There are a million of them in each kidney. Apparently, as you age, like when you hit around 40, you start losing your nephrons. But also, apparently, there's no functional consequence of that. So you start getting old and some of your nephrons start dying, but nobody cares. And in fact, really, it makes sense kind of that nobody cares because you can actually function with just one kidney. You don't really need both kidneys to adequately clean your blood, even though you are filtering out 180 liters of fluid every single 24 hours. Did I even tell you that fact yet? I feel like I did not tell you that. If I didn't tell you that, I'm a terrible person because that is the coolest fact ever. So you have one million nephrons per kidney. Now I'm going to show you where the nephrons live. And they live, I'm going to draw you like a little mini nephron. They've got a little uh, structure here and then they dip down in and then they've got all these collecting ducts. So they dip down, and I'm going to draw you what an actual nephron looks like, but these guys are my nephrons. And notice that they have little ball-shaped parts up at the top, and you will see, like, why I'm drawing it this way in just a second when I draw you a real one. I just want you to know that there's a million nephrons in there. Do you have it? Okay. Now let's go draw a picture of a nephron itself. What a great idea. Whose idea was that? Because that was such a great idea. We're going to make a blue nephron. I feel a little uncomfortable with that. We're going to make an orange nephron, assuming that I can find the right color of orange. This is a beautiful color of orange. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. A nephron is a tube. And here's what it looks like. It looks like a lobster claw. Now, I'm going to draw you the whole thing. So you go ahead and draw yourself a little nephron here as I draw it. See how it looks kind of like a little lobster claw? And, you know, you might be like, wow, that's really cool. But then it dips down. What? Really? And then there's another little lobster claw-ish thing like this. And it dips, oh dear, like this. And then we have more. That's not a lobster claw. That's like the squiggly part. And then it does this. And it dumps into another tube. This nephron dumps into a tube. Now the interesting thing is that there are other nephrons that also dump into this tube. I would erase this. I wonder if I can. Look at that fantasticness. Imagine, if you will, draw your brain back. Here's where I'm dumping pre-P. Do you remember the first place that I said, okay, we're going to dump into this structure. All of our kidney structures are going to drain into this structure. Do you remember what it was called? Well, guess what? All your pre-pee that's being dumped into this structure, which I'm going to name all these for you, they're actually heading to the minor calyx. And from the minor calyx, they're going to head to a major calyx. Right? That makes, like, that, that works for you based on the previous section. And from the major calyx, we're just going to dump it to the pelvis, the renal pelvis. And from the renal pelvis, where are we going to go? Into the ureter. And from the ureter, why not? Let's just keep going. We're going into the bladder. And from the bladder, we're going into the urethra. You could have done this, couldn't you? And from the urethra, we're going to go bye-bye into the potty. Hopefully into the potty. If you're my small children, 
who knows where you're going to go. Terrible. All right. So, so you can see how we're just funneling and filtering and filtering our stuff, our urine to ultimately get rid of it. Minor calyx, there's no modification. Now here's the gig. Everywhere in the nephron, let me draw that name on here. This is a nephron. All of this green stuff, that's not part of the nephron. The nephrons drain into all those green structures. The nephron itself, its job is to filter the blood. Do you feel like Hmm, there's something missing here. We should probably have a blood supply somehow associated with this structure. And we do, and I'm going to draw it for you like this. There's a blood supply that kind of nestles in to this little zone right here. It's like a little, it's like a little what? Little basket. And look at my blood supply that actually goes in here into this little bubble and then out here. That, that's relevant. I, I think that, I mean, we're definitely going to talk about this and how it works and the sizes that I've drawn them are relevant, which is shocking. Now, shall we enable, enable our parts or name them whatever you would like to do? First of all, take a deep breath. My little lobster claw, it's not really a lobster claw. Are you ready for this? That's a cross section of something that's more like a little cup. It's like a teacup. We could go sit inside there and have a tea party. But I did a cross section of my teacup, right? And so it looks like a lobster claw. Do you, can you visualize that? Imagine a balloon that you punch your hand into and you end up with a little, a little hole in your balloon. And you can stick your fingers in there like that, and there, there's a space in there. That space is filled with capillary. This is a capillary bed, and it has a name. The, it, it's like this knot of capillaries called the glomerulus. And this little bubble cup that is surrounding the glomerulus, which was just a net of, knot of capillaries, this is called Bowman's capsule. I think it's called technically the renal capsule. Um, but I think that's what you're supposed to call it. The glomerular capsule. I remember it as Bowman's capsule because I imagine Bowman is somebody and that's really cool. Are you ready for the next part? Bowman's capsule is this bubble. It's surrounding the glomerulus, which is a knot of capillaries. We also have the proximal convoluted tubule. And you can look in your notes to see how to spell that whole thing. The proximal convoluted tubule flows into the descending loop of Henley. I'm sure that there's a new name for the descending loop of Henley because I'm sure Henley's a dude who probably dead and white who named this loop. And then guess what this one is? If this is the descending loop of Henley, what do you suppose that one's called? The ascending loop of Henley. I went to Henley High School and we were the Henley Hornets. Go Hornets. That's how I remember it. Now, this was the proximal convoluted tubule. What would you call this one? Totally looks similar, doesn't it? Not proximal. Not proximal. It's distal convoluted tubule. And that's the squiggly one at the end. And then distal convoluted tubule dumps pre-pee into this tube that's collecting 
pre-P from all the nephrons in the area, and so it's called the collecting duct. Yep, I love nephrons. Thank you, nephrons. All right, what do you not know at this stage of the game? Where is this thing located? Okay, that's a good, that's a good, great question. Thanks for asking that. Let's remind ourselves. Ready? Look at that. This is the cortex. That's the cortex of the kidney. And Bowman's capsule, the glomerulus, the proximal convoluted tubule, those guys are all found in the cortex of the kidney. What do you think? What's going on with this little loop descending down into the loopiness? Where's it going? Where's it descending down into? This is the medulla of the kidney. So let's keep this in your brain and let's go back and look at our kidney itself. Look, here's Bowman's capsule with the glomerulus. And here's the proximal convoluted tubule, and it's dipping down into our loops of Henle, and it's coming back into the distal convoluted tubule. And then we have collecting ducts. And the collecting ducts are coming down and dumping into these minor calyces. Does that, can you kind of visualize how we're going to put all these things together? And again, how many of them do we have? One million. You've got to be kidding me. That's so many of those things. So there they are. I love nephrons. Now, we're going to go through the anatomy of the nephron, the structure that makes up each of these different parts of the nephron and how that structure determines its function. What I'm going to tell you is that its function is fascinating and pretty complicated. And we are not going to go into the crazy details of the function. That's where you're going to go. I've got a whole chunk of physio lectures out there on kidney function, and you're welcome to go check those out for more details. We're focusing strictly on how do the structures of these different parts of the tube enable the, the functions that take place at those particular locations. So we're going to start out with the renal corpuscle, which that's the fancy name that I said we should have. That's this area. That's glomerulus plus Bowman's capsule. Let's start out looking at that, and then we'll work our way through the whole nephron. 